medical apparel maker Figs will begin trading on the NYC this morning following a year of demand for its product in the healthcare sector. Joining us now, first on CNBC, are co founders and co CEOs, Trina Spear and Heather Hassan. Congrats to you both. Let the Thank music go so by much. there. And you're welcome. Trina, let me just start with you. I, you know, I'm trying to understand the business. I think you had 1.3 million active customers as of the end of last year. That was up from only, let's call it 600,000 the year prior. And 62% of your net revenues came from repeat. But I guess my question is, how big is this market to begin with? The healthcare apparel market is massive. It's a $12 billion market in the United States. It's $79 billion globally. Um, and we actually feel like those numbers are a bit understated because what we offer to healthcare professionals is way beyond uh, scrubs and some other healthcare apparel items. We're really providing um, a lot of lifestyle products for our healthcare professionals to go to work and be at work and go from work uh, on shift, off shift, head to toe. Uh, and at you know 263 million in net revenue in 2020. We feel like we're just getting started. That's a 2% market share in the U.S. We're just getting started on, on what's to come for figs. Right. And, and where is your average price point? I'm just curious as well, uh, given, you know, the wide variety of uh, salaries, basically, in the medical profession. I mean, sort of where are you focused, given where your numbers are in terms of what those cost? Sure. I mean, our tops are about $35. Our pants are about $45. We're, although we are a premium product, we create premium products. Uh, we look to ensure that they are both affordable and accessible for our healthcare professionals. You know, about two thirds of our customers make less than $100,000 a year. So it's really important for us to be able to create products that are both affordable and accessible. Uh, you said in the prospectus that about 98% of your products are sold uh, through your digital platform. As you look to expand and grow into the valuation you received in this IPO, are you considering brick and mortar? Uh, more of a brick and mortar footprint as uh, some other brands have done previously, such as Warby Parker, Allbirds, and so forth. What's your what's your growth strategy? So we don't. In terms of retail, um, we are going to. We would, if we ever do it, we're going to do it because of the brand, um, and we're going to do it um, in places where our healthcare professionals are. So whether it's right near a hospital, whether it's a really dense area of where uh, offices are, um, and in terms of you know. Our, our growth strategy, we're going to continue to grow um, online and we're going to continue to grow on our app and we're going to continue to grow uh, direct to consumer all the way, whether it's uh, retail or online. And Trina, an interesting aspect of your deal is you were kind of the guinea pet guinea pigs for this Robin Hood uh, program, IPO access that gave retail investors more of an opportunity to buy shares at the IPO price. About 1% of your deal was allocated to retail investors through this platform, so 5.8 million, give or take. How did that work out, and how is that different than the traditional retail allocation that you would have in pretty much any IPO? So we were super proud to partner with Robinhood on providing access to our healthcare professionals to be able to invest pre-IPO. I mean, normally those opportunities are uh, just for Wall Street insiders uh, and other types of investors. So being able to provide uh, this opportunity to our healthcare professionals uh, was really important to us, and it goes back to our broader mission of, of celebrating, empowering, and serving the healthcare community. Uh, Heather, it's not often we see two co uh, founders and co CEOs, uh, both women. And I'm curious, not from the women front, frankly, just from an organizational front, how do you guys split up responsibilities and get to final decision making? So I think it goes back to having the same core values, having the same vision of the company. And since we are co-founders and co-CEOs, um, I, you know, I really believe that uh, we're able to run faster, run more efficient, and get more done. And it's a lot of fun as well. But um, we have a team behind us. It's not just us. It's a team, an exceptional team um, that uh, we're going to keep growing. And uh, we're seeing a lot of video here. I mean, should I expect to see medical professors out and about? Are they going to go to dinner in these things? Or is this largely still for the work environment? This is for the work environment. But as you know, today we went public on the New York Stock Exchange. And uh, we actually launched those two colors. It's uh, the jade. And actually, they're wearing a graphite uh, today. So All right, well, I'm very proud. Uh, uh, I'm sure you are. Uh, we will be following closely. Uh, appreciate both of you joining us. Thank you. Thank Trina you so much. Thank you so much. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.